Wonder how much that is. Well, what do you want that for? It's ugly. Be good company for our monkey. How can a pottery dog be good company for our monkey? Well, it's non moving, non thinking, non live, isn't it? Being castrated won't seem half as bad. <laughs> hey, look. Didn't Grandad want a desk? It's his birthday tomorrow. Doesn't take up any room. He can put it on his table. It's great. He'd like that. 35 quid. Can we afford it? No. Where are you going? To buy it. Thank you very much. Ah, want any help? We'd like to buy the desk, please. That one over there. We'll take it now. I've got the van outside. What do you think? Buy it. Definitely. Excuse me. We'd like to... One moment, please. I'm just attending to these two gentlemen. Uh, will it be cash or a cheque? Oh, cash. The business. Oh, this way. I'll stay here. You go and settle up. Will you cut her out? Look, it snaps. And I do. <sighs> nice little lap desk you've got there. Nice little what? Lap desk. It is called a lap desk. A brass band lap desk. Oh, that? Yeah. We've been looking for a lap band brass desk for ages. I'll, uh, I'll give you twice what you paid for it. No. Thanks, anyway. Three times, then. Plus ten. Um, <laughs> could we think about it? <coughs> sure. Sure, there's no rush. It's for someone sick, you see. Someone disabled. Confined to the house. Immobilised. Nothing. Oh, well, isn't that a coincidence? We bought it for our granddad. He's the same. But, well, he's not sick, but he's all the other things you mentioned. Well, you might know him. Grandad Boswell sits outside his house in Kelso Street, tells everybody to piss off. Well, <laughs> um, we'll look out for you. Give us a ring. When you decide. Yeah, I will. Thanks. <laughs> Endangered species. Frogs. <laughs> oh, great. Why didn't you give them the key to Grandad's house while you are about it? I was just being friendly, that's all. I mean, they can't be bad people, can they, wanting to buy something for someone who's sick? No. No, of course they can't. That one with the frog probably got that scar on his face donating his cheekbones to someone. <laughs> Boswell, there's three notes here, did you know? Two of them were stuck together. Findings, keepings, Tom. Why, Mr. Boswell? Why'd you come in here and rescue all these dogs? It's a long story, Tom. It's in my guts. Devious. I'm not even interested in how much money you've made. Now stop that nonsense, Billy. You're in the sandwich business, not MI5. <laughs> anyway, I know how much you make. I make the sandwiches, don't I? It's not good to divulge your business to people. <coughs> We're not people, are we? We're family. You waste no time divulging it when you're broke, do you? 
You shouted through a loud hailer then. I'm doing what Joey does. I'm being enigmatic. <laughs> the difference is, it's Joey's nature. You're about as enigmatic as a foghorn. What are they for? Keeping my hands nice. Cos I'm a model, aren't I? <laughs> there you are. There's Grandad's cake. Where are the candles? Oh, there isn't room for them all. <laughs> I put one big one in the middle. Now, come on, you two. I want to set the table for lunch. I'll go and condition me hair. It's a full-time job, eh, body? If she moves from one chair to another, she has to go in for a service. <laughs> <laughs> Models have to look good all the time, Billy. Julie only looks in the mirror once a day and she always looks great. You love her, don't you, son? She's always telling me off, always putting me straight. I wish she'd married me. I'd feel like a proper family man then. I always feel like a visitor when I go over the road to see her. And when I look at the baby, I feel more like her uncle than a dad. She'll do it one day. When, though? When will she do it? When? When you stop leaping to your feet and shouting, when, though? When will she do it? When? <laughs> now, if you go in there, you'll find another room. All right. I think what's happened to Joey. You better start you off. I'll take Grandad's tray. <clears throat> Press. We're used to you saying them, Mum. What would you do if I was dead? Well, we wouldn't say prayers, would we? Letting you die like that. <laughs> I thank thee, O Lord, for Carmen, and for love and for health. Amen. Thanks for Julie and the baby. Amen. Thank you for me face and body. <laughs> and for the way my hair's turned out today. <laughs> Amen. Uh, <laughs> thanks for... Uh, things. Amen. <laughs> there are moments when I'm glad I pushed, shoved and heaved you all into the world. <laughs> Be granddad, you better behave yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Where's me pudding? Please. Where's me pudding, please? You'll get it in a few minutes. It's jam sponge. I'm keeping it hot. Can I have cream instead of custard? Please. Oh, forget it. I don't want a bloody pudding now. <laughs> I hope you leave you something for Joey. <coughs> Strange, isn't it? Grandad hasn't mentioned his birthday. He's not even hinted at it. <laughs> How old is he? 75? Yeah, he's been on this earth 75 years. <laughs> when he was a lad, it was all fields and farms around here. Never heard words like nuclear, radioactive, insecticide, <laughs> pollution. You could go out in the street, string the puddles in those days. <laughs> Remember the way our monger used to eat the snow? He'd run along with his mouth open, shoveling it in. <laughs> He doesn't do it anymore. He knows poison when he sees it. <laughs> Animals know these things. We take his presents in in the morning with his breakfast and we'll save the cake till tea time. I hope the candle's edible this time. Remember last year? He ate all 74 of them. <laughs> <laughs> Are Julie and the baby coming? I'm going to see her when I finish my lunch. I will ask her. Well, tell her it's a gathering, not a party. What about Carmen? Oh, yeah. Yeah, she's coming, yeah. She does everything, I say. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose I'll have to ask your dad. I wish he wouldn't park his dust cart outside our house. Mm. It makes it look as though the family hadn't made any progress at all. <laughs> Hello, yes? Hello, ma'am. Uh, listen, count me out for lunch, will you? I'm having some with Dad. How did that come about? Well, I bumped into him in the street, in a little cafe. Oh, all right. You better remind him about Grandad's birthday tomorrow. We're taking the presents in in the morning about half past eight with his breakfast. 
Okay, ma'am. I'll see you. Ta-ra, love. Here you go, son. Road sweeper's lunch. I got you mushrooms instead of pig. Thanks, Dad. What are you doing around here, anyway? Oh, I was just driving around. When you were a little lad, your cheek used to throb when you were telling a lie. As if the truth was there inside your mouth, banging with a little hammer trying to get out. <laughs> it's still there, I see. No, I was just driving round, that's all, just driving round. This egg's overdone. Look at that, eh? Looks like a makeup sponge. <laughs> How's yours? Mine's okay, take it back. No, it doesn't matter. Instead of dipping me sausage in my egg, I'll dip my egg in my beans. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Edgar. He was walking down the street. I chased him, but it was no good. So that's it, eh? <laughs> well, how did you know it was him? It was two years ago. It was him, I know it was. Look, he's a dog. Dogs are faithful. How could he be living around here? He'd find his way to you, wouldn't he? I don't know. He disappeared. How did that happen? He wouldn't just go, would he? Well, he's stolen. That's obvious. It was him, Dad. I know every little thing about that dog. The way he walked, the pattern of his fur, the way his front right foot turned out, everything. Well, you got Mongi now. And Mongi's great, but we've all got Mongi, the whole family. Edgar was mine. Then why didn't he come to you? That's the upsetting part. You know, I thought you'd got over this. You know, with you not mentioning it. No, I'm always looking for him. Always wondering. If I found out somebody was being cruel to him. Hey, now, just settle down, lad. Simmer down. You're letting all the old emotion take over. Now, why would anyone want to be cruel to him? Cos that's how some people are, isn't it? Where did he go? Down Pippin Street. Did you? I've knocked on all the doors, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's all Labradors and Retrievers down there, isn't it? They use them to fetch the chickens from Tesco's. <laughs> I only told you, Dad, because you're out on the streets more than most people. You would tell me if you saw him, wouldn't you? I see under the devolutions. They all look the same to me. No, they don't. He wasn't my dog. I didn't know him like you. If I see him, I'll tell you, all right? Right. Right, now, now for some happy chat. How's life with Lilo Lil? Oh, ecstatic, son, ecstatic. <laughs> How's life with your ma'am? <laughs> She was beginning to come round, you know, when you stayed at home. She was beginning to remember things about you two. It's one thing remembering what was. It's another living with what is. Yeah. It's about time you were settling down and all. Oh, I'm like you, Dad. I don't want to be tied to anyone. The great thing about a mother is it doesn't matter how many lunches you miss, she never says you don't love me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, though, Joey, that if I'd stayed with you, ma'am, I couldn't have been a road sweeper. She wouldn't have allowed that. She'd have taken all the tatty buildings of me mind and demolished them. And I'd have had to think plastic and vinyl and silicone instead of old brick. Yeah, I can see all that. You're two different people, aren't you? It's mice and elephants, isn't it? And yet, you know, when it comes down to it, it's your man that makes the bells ring. With her tight curled hair and her spotless apron, her homemade scones. And what about her little lavender bags she used to put in the underwear drawers? <laughs> <laughs> it's a struggle, son. It's a struggle. I haven't met a girl that can do that to me yet. Alice Wareham was the right model. But she used to slam the door of me, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> Women just don't understand how we feel about our wheels, do they? You know, your mum hates me little yellow cat, but I love it. We go everywhere together. And, what's more important, we go where we like. My best moments were me and the Jack, with Edgar in the back seat. Whenever we came within a mile of a bastard, he used to growl. <laughs> I don't know the danger till I'm right in it now. Anyway, how's the buying and selling business? Oh, you know. I buy something in one street and sell it in the next. Twin jobs, they call it. <laughs> <laughs> There's not much you don't know about the trade, eh, Dad? Natural talent, son. Natural talent. Oh, it's not right here, Adrian, in your granddad's parlour. <laughs> <laughs> He's watching television. His eyes might be on television. His ears are poised in this direction. We can't do anything here, Adrian. Yes, we can. We can do this. <laughs> Jack, I'll always remember that button on your blouse, Carl. <laughs> Jack, I'll see it in my mind's eye. Shining in the moonlight. Glistening in the firelight. All big and glowing. <laughs> in the headlamps. 
Oh, it's only on a fastener, Adrian. But you wore it when we first met. I thought it was a mother of pearl brooch. All you have to do is pull it. <laughs> and when you wear a necklace, it clinks against it. <laughs> It'll come undone. Like little bells. In fact, the old blouse will just come off. <laughs> so, it's our lucky button, that can't be. <laughs> well, what is it? We can't do anything here, Adrian. No, oh, why must we be doing something all the time? Why well, can't we just sit and talk? And kiss? And... talk? I mean, we're always doing something, Carmen. You're going off me, aren't you, Adrian? No! Yes, you are. And you know why you're going off me? Because we haven't done anything. <laughs> it's not like that. Men are like that. Oh, God, it's all too complicated for me. Oh. Look, it's only complicated if you think about it, Adrian. <coughs> Just close your eyes and don't think about it. <laughs> Just do it. Yes, well, if you're going to do it, you'll have to go somewhere else and do it. <laughs> do you think Grandad will like it? It's reminding him that he's old, isn't it? Well, he is old. Yeah, but he might not feel old until he sees that. He's always going on about how cold he is. Suppose he forgets it's there and he gets up to go somewhere. <laughs> He'll fall over. Oh, hey, Julie. <clears throat> what shall I put on the card? Happy Christmas. <laughs> Can't you think it out for yourself, Billy? I know. May you live another hundred years, love Billy and Julie. That's daft, isn't it? We'll all be dead. Who's going to look after him? <laughs> You're always precise, aren't you? Always proper. You never do anything stupid. Apart from getting involved with you. No, I don't. Sometimes I think I've been here before. Fallen down all the potholes, climbed all the fences, listened to all the verbal garbage. Now I've got to go through it all again. Was I here when you were here before? No. This is your first trip. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you make a balls up of everything. Get well soon. <laughs> I was in a hurry. The thing that worries me, Billy, is how am I going to explain to the baby that you're her dad? <laughs> I'm only doing this for you, Billy. Come on. <sighs> I hope the tea isn't cold. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Grandad. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Do you want to come in, then? <laughs> Happy birthday, love. Come on. Okay, Grandad. Happy birthday. Joey? Joey? <laughs> I'm too late. Have you seen our Joey? No, why? Well, he was here, suddenly, he was gone. He'll be all right. He'll be all right, he'll be all right. You haven't changed, have you, Freddie Boswell? He'll be all right, don't worry, it's nothing. 
What do you know about any of us? I might not know anything about you, Nelly Boswell, but I know about my kids, and he'll be all right. Excuse me, I want to talk to you about your dog. Uh, I live a few streets away. Oh, I'm sorry, love. Has he been bothering you? What's he done? Hey, you'd better come in, have a word with me dad. It's his dog. Through here, love. I'll just get him. Uh, what I'd like to know is, uh, where did you get the dog? Oh, somewhere local. A pet shop. And, uh, when was that? About uh, 18 months ago, about two years ago. My dad'll know. Only he's just moved here, you see. And the dog's been a proper nuisance, getting out all the time. Never used to. You did say you got him in Liverpool, didn't you? Yeah, our Brian got him for our dad's birthday and took him up to Sheffield. Only our dad can't look after himself anymore. So he's moved in here with us, dog and all. There he is. You can come and see him, only he's not very good on his feet, uh, uh, and... No. No, it's OK. Has he been tearing up your garden or something? Uh, no, uh, nothing like that. It, I just admired him and I wonder where you got him from. I think it was that place in Allsop Street. Not a very nice place between you and me. And when our Brian saw him in this cage... Uh, OK, fine. I'll, I'll find one like him, I expect. He do, does love him, doesn't he? Your dad. He does love the dog. <laughs> love him. It's his life. That dog has all the chairs. We have to sit on the floor. <laughs> well, he'll have to keep him in. He'll get run over. <laughs> yeah. Our Brian will take him up to the park. He'll settle in. It's all strange round here to him. Well, uh, I'm sorry to have troubled you. Thanks. Oh, I'll see you out, love. Thanks. I've missed you. And we thank thee, Father, for the food on the table, for all thy loving care, and for allowing us those moments with Grandad when he opened his birthday presents. May he live another hundred years. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. 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 Why didn't you tell us you thought you found Edgar, love? We wouldn't have worried where you were. Oh, uh, it wasn't him after all. It was a big brown mongrel. So, how did Grandad's birthday go? You always loved that dog, didn't you, Joey? Funny how he disappeared. I hope nobody took him to one of those laboratories. Billy? He did terrible things to animals in those laboratories. <laughs> a friend of Julie's Billy. told me... <laughs> Your mouth's running amok again. <laughs> forget it, forget it. Now, how did it all go? Grandad, please, was he? You'll have to go in and see his presents after your lunch, Joe. You'll be upset if you don't. <laughs> I don't know why I bothered to wrap mine up at all. He tore it apart, never even read the card, held up the sweater and said, I've got four of these now, and the other three are better. <laughs> I decided to be practical. I bought him a pair of those pyjamas that don't open down the front. I mean, whenever he answers the door, he gets more viewers than Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> he must look awfully funny naked. All sorts of puckered. 
comes to us all. And he's got funny little legs, they won't close. <laughs> we like our desk. Yeah, we've got him. I mean, there must be parts of him that have almost disappeared. Oh, must we have every meal to the tune of him harping on the less tasteful things in life. We had close encounters with childbirth for weeks after that baby was born. <laughs> now it's a slow disintegration of the human body. <laughs> Remember that fight he described to us? The one he saw in town? We had to eat our tea while he punched the Swiss roll and threw ketchup all over the place. <laughs> oh, our Jerry's upset. It's your fault talking about laboratories. <laughs> Try saying it sitting down, Billy. <laughs> Every time I open my mouth in this house, I'm wrong. Nobody will face reality in this house. Hello, yes. Hello, Grandad. Who are they? You mean they just knocked at your door? I've told you, haven't I, not to open the door to anyone. Use your peephole. All right, Joey's coming round. Two men called the Grandads. They want to buy a desk or something. I know it is. It's those two fellas from the sale. We got Grandad this desk. A brass band lap desk, they called it. Yeah, and these two blokes followed us out of the house and they offered us twice as much as we paid for it. Well, how did they know that Grandad had it? <sighs> Never mind. Stay here, I'll see you. It's only a desk. They'd bought it by the time he rang, hadn't he? Well, it was a present, so I thought I ought to tell you. What did you let them do that for? They gave me 150 quid for it. Our Jack and Adrian can do with that. They're all a skint. Look, Grandad, the thing is, you've got to know the game, you see. Now, those two men, they didn't buy that desk for fun, did they? I don't know, do I? Of course you know. There must be something in it for them, wasn't there? Now, the thing you don't know, Grand. You mean this? <laughs> Where'd you get that from? In the little secret drawer, in the <laughs> desk, where people had the treasures, the one you were going to tell me about. <laughs> Another little bag in the compartment. Empty it was. I saw I'm checking. They upped the price when they saw it. Ten sovereigns there are. Worth 600 quid. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know that? I just know, don't I? Uh, I'm not stupid, you know. <laughs> OK, Dad. Out you come. Hello, son. Natural, Natural talent, son. <laughs> Natural talent. <laughs> gotta get up, gotta get up.